Avery Candy from Epic Gaming Night, and this is my top 10 games of 2017. 2017 was a great year in board gaming, and there were so many games that came out. And I didn't have a chance to play every single game. I don't think anybody did, but... These are the games that I played in 2017 that I really enjoyed and made my list of top 10. So let's go ahead and get into it with my number 10. My number 10 is Unlock. This is one of the escape room in a box games, but this is one that is replayable and you can teach your family and friends the game after you've played it through it once. I love the mechanic of the cards and the way the puzzles go together and you're trying to figure out different things. And there's an app that keeps time and score with you. And it also has like unique twists in that app as well. I love the way this game just makes you feel like you're like figuring things out as you're going through. And I enjoy the narrative in the Unlock games a lot better than a lot of the other escape room games that I've played. So for me, my number 10 is the Unlock games, a whole series of these games. But yeah, super exciting games. That's my number 10 of 2017. My number nine is a game from Ryan Lockett and Red Raven Games, and that is Near and Far. This is a game where you are trying to create a party of adventurers and go out and like figure out how to get the right things to play down these artifacts and going out and fighting off bandits. And there's all these interesting story moments as you're going through the book. You're playing on this big like poster board map that you're playing different games and flipping through with a continuous storyline. There's several different modes and ways you can play this game. Definitely very exciting. I love all the different mechanics in near and far and it's just a beautiful game like most of Ryan Lockett games are so that's why my number nine is near and far my number eight is a game from Emerson Matsuchi and that's Century Spice Road slash Gullum Edition. This is a game where you're just trying to collect gems or cubes and turn them into different gems and cubes so that way you can complete different, like either get the golems or complete different orders of spices. And it's very quick the way you just play down the cards and you're changing your cubes and collecting extra cubes or getting extra cards from the row to try to like update your little engine. It's a very, very quick playing game and a game that like there's basically no downtime at all and you play through it really quick just doing all the different stuff an awesome little set collection like resource manipulation game and that is Century Spice Road Crystal Golem. I really enjoy the Crystal Golem version because the artwork is amazing so I'm so glad that Plan B came out with that one and I hope that they end up going both ways on the lines and making more of each of these games so I'm super excited to see what new comes out for Century, and that's why it's my number eight. My number seven is the Fallout board game. I'm definitely a huge fan of the IP of Fallout and really enjoy playing Fallout 3. Fallout is an amazing video game, and it's cool how they've taken a lot of the theme of that video game and put it into the board game. One of the main parts that I love about this game is the whole, like, choose your own adventurous like card deck of events that you're going through. Whether you're racing for which side to faction to try to help out, or whether you're doing these different side quests, there's always multiple options and it branches different ways whenever you play the game. If you do it this way, this time you play it, it'll open up these different side quests. And you do it this way, it'll open up different side quests. So it adds an interesting amount of replayability in those quests with trying to figure out what's gonna go on. I love the little Pip-Boy dice and the way the combat works in the game. And you're trying to figure out ways to manipulate those with different items you collect and it's also interesting to see the different places that you find in Fallout represented on the tabletop. So my number seven is the Fallout board game. My number six is a gigantic board game. The box alone is just massively huge. This is Gloomhaven. So Gloomhaven is a game of fantasy adventure but the card mechanic for the combat is the part that I really love about this game because you have these cards that you're playing out and trying to figure out the best time to play them and when to to use them to do damage to different opponents and move around the board but also if you run out of those cards then you're basically exhausted from the combat there's interesting ways to like upgrade your little combat deck as you get experience and go along and you also have a like modifier for your damage that you'll do on those cards so it's a very interesting unique game there's tons of legacy elements where you're getting characters and trying to finish their quest so that way you can retire them and unlock new characters and go through the story of this game. There is so much content in this box and I know that I'll never get a chance to play through nearly half of it, but I really enjoy Gloomhaven and that's why it is my number six game of 2017. My number five is one of my most anticipated games for this year, and it's because it is one of the most fun you can have in a board game, and that is Rhino Hero Super Battle. I love Rhino Hero, and when I heard that a super battle or super version of this game was coming out where you could build like 3D style, like 
towers and things where it's not just one straight up tower, I was blown away. And after playing the game, I have had a blast playing with my friends and family, building these crazy towers and trying to figure out how to like not knock it over as you're going up higher and higher. I built massive towers of this with Mark Street and with my, my game group and I've had fun playing it with my kids and with my family. So Rhino Hero Super Battle is definitely one of my favorite games of 2017. And if you're looking for a dexterity game, it's definitely one that's fun for basically anybody. So make sure to check out Rhino Hero Super Battle and it's my number five of 2017. My number four is definitely my favorite game in the Tiny Epic series, and that is Tiny Epic Quest. This game has a lot of nostalgia with the way that it looks based off of like old school video games with like the, the Zelda look to it, but the game itself is super exciting where you're following the other actions of people doing the different movements around the board, trying to move your different elves around the board, trying to figure out what you want to do. Do you want to go and fight goblins? Do you want to try to take a tower? What's the quest currently at? Can you get your guys in the correct position? on the board to be able to claim that quest. You get all these awesome and exciting meeple, idol meeple guys that you plop in the different items that they get and it'll help you out during the game and normally those are really powerful and you got to figure out how to best utilize them to help what you're trying to do in the game and then the main thing that just made this game amazing for me is the whole night phase of press your luck rolling the dice trying to complete the things you're working on on the board but also not take damage by the goblin and get completely knocked out so tiny epic quest is one of my favorite games of all time from this year and that's why it's my number four my number three is another game that i will never get through all of the content in. A giant huge campaign game that is Seventh Continent. This is a game where you're going out and exploring an island and you have this action deck that you're trying to min-max and make sure you're not spending too many cards but making sure you can complete the different things that you're trying to do on the board as you're moving from location to location and exploring but also being able to create different items that can help you along your way. You're searching for food so you can replenish that deck and then there's all sorts of like weird interesting stuff going on on the Seventh Continent that you're trying to figure out how to relieve yourself of the curse so that way you and whoever you're playing with can get off the island. Super exciting game, Seventh Continent, and I haven't even dug into half of what this game has in store, and I'm definitely excited to play it more, and I'd love to see more games use this system with the action cards and being able to create exciting items. So Seventh Continent is my number three. And number two is Rune Wars the Miniatures game. I have played a ton of Rune Wars. I've had a blast painting up the miniatures and playing with my co-host and I've gone to several tournaments in our local area here and it's just a miniatures game I'm not really big on like miniature style stuff, but the way that this game is so elegant with the way the dice combat works with the trays whether it's the width of it does the times the damage and then the depth you get to reroll and building your armies is a ton of fun and figuring out how to build the list for what you want to do to face off against your opponent. I played the white car undead and I've had a blast playing those guys even though they're very much a finesse army to play and I've just had a blast with Rune Wars the miniatures game. I hope Fantasy Flight continues to push this game like they're doing with their organized play stuff and more people get into it because all four of the factions are out now and I'm super excited to see what more Fantasy Flight has in store for Rune Wars and to continue to be excited about it. So Rune Wars is my number two game of 2017. My all-time favorite game of 2017. I'm wearing a shirt that says I activate Mechatol Rex because it is Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. I love Twilight Imperium 3. It was my favorite game. It is one of my favorite games of all time. I loved everything you could do in that game and Twilight Imperium takes Twilight Imperium 3 and streamlines it but doesn't take away any of the epicness. It makes trading more engaging as you're having to talk your opponents into trading each round instead of just a thing that just randomly occurs. And then you also have new objectives and they figured out how to make things work better. The tech tree is simplified so you're not having to stare at a page and try to figure things out, but it still is very engaging trying to figure out what items you want. This is a gigantic, massive, epic game. And Twilight Imperium 4 is just amazing to play when you set out a whole day. It's worth it to make it happen because you're gonna make a space epic conquest that you will never forget. I remember every single game I've played of Twilight Imperium 3 and Twilight Imperium 4 just takes that and makes it easier and more approachable to get to the table. So Twilight Imperium 4, my favorite game of 2017, hands down. So that was my list for 2017. Thanks so much everybody for all of your support through this whole year. There's been so many amazing great games. I can't wait to see what 2018 has in store for the board game industry 
and for Board Game Media. You guys are all amazing. Thanks so much, everybody who's commented on any of my stuff and all the things that have happened this year. I loved meeting you guys at conventions and hanging out with people all over the place and hitting up people on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure to talk to me and hit us up over there. And you guys are amazing. I can't wait to see all the games in 2018, and I'll see you then on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.